Okay guys, so today we're building a GPU miner. Specifically a miner dedicated to ethereum mining, but we can always switch it out for any other coins if we so choose. But either ways guys, I'm about to guide you through the entire process of building this rig, how much we spent on it, how much we're making on it, as well as all the issues that we've encountered throughout this build. So hopefully you guys decide to stay throughout this entire journey of actually trying to make more passive income. Now with that being said, if you haven't already smashed the subscribe button, Go ahead and do that if you love passive income or anything to do with making money online and let's go ahead and jump right into today's video. Okay guys, so first things first, we needed parts. So we headed over to Amazon and we added a few things to the cart. We then purchased a bunch of items as you guys can see all on our order list right here on Amazon. We have a lot of parts. Now I understand right here guys that you can buy used parts, however guys since I wanted to get mining as soon as possible due to the fact that I already got the GPUs lying around, I wanted to go ahead and actually get these parts in as fast as possible. Meaning yes I did somewhat overpay for a few of these parts, but overall guys we still got them so it should still make us money. And sure enough, within the next few days, thanks to our buddy Jeff Bezos, we've actually received all our parts and we were now able to actually put together our first mining rig. Okay guys, let's get into the parts list. First up, we have a Z390A Pro, a motherboard from MSI. Then we have some off-brand mining rig frame, as well as some risers I picked up from Amazon. We've also picked up an Intel iCore 3, can't forget about the cooling fans, as well as a Kingston hard drive, some power switches for the rig. We also got a singular 8GB RAM stick, as well as an 1800 watt power supply that I had to exchange the 750 watt power supply for, simply because I miscalculated how much electricity we actually needed. And finally, the heart of the entire rig, the GPUs, which are all 6600 XT models. Next thing we had to do is actually build the mining rig frame and believe it or not guys, I kid you not, this thing was actually a pain in the ass to build simply because the instructions were pretty dog awful. We're talking like IKEA furniture type things here. But eventually we got it done. Next it was time to actually put together all the components. So we unboxed our motherboard first off, then we grabbed the i 3, unboxed that and placed it into its right position, clamped it down. And then we installed the CPU cooling fan, which is just the default one that it came with. And yes, that means thermal paste was already pre-applied. Now we had to unbox the RAM stick. Now I'm not gonna lie guys, to be truthful, I actually had some struggle putting in the RAM stick. I'm sure it's not just me though, because these things don't go in that easy. Now guys, at this point we had most things installed on the motherboard, so it was finally time to actually mount the motherboard onto the rig. Which also happened to be another pain in the ass, because it took forever dude. So once we actually got the motherboard finally mounted, I actually added the power supply unit off camera simply because it was nothing that special. Then I hooked it up to the motherboard and it was ready to go. So now at this point the rig was coming along very nicely and it was finally time to add the heart of the entire rig guys. The GPUs were going straight up on the rig. Now this process was actually pretty simple and kind of satisfying in my opinion. All we had to do was add a few screws to the rig that mounted the GPUs onto there. Then we grabbed the risers which you guys can think of as extension cables but for GPUs. And we stuck them directly into the motherboard. And lastly all we had to do was plug in the PCIe cables of which came from the actual power supply to power the GPUs. Right boys, so we're gonna go ahead and get the first power up with all the GPUs on there. Let's see if it works. There we go. All right, look at that. That looks amazing, dude. Hell yeah. All right guys, so at this point we had three GPUs ready to go on the rig. However, we came across an issue where one of the GPUs, specifically the gaming version of the 6600 XT, didn't actually work. Now to clarify, it did work with gaming and other purposes, but for mining, for some reason, it just wouldn't work at all. So I had to switch it out and settle for a 1060 6 gigabyte GPU instead. Now as you guys may or may not know, we actually have a capacity for 6 GPUs able to run on this rig. Now currently you guys see 3 GPUs on there, and that's because we haven't had the opportunity to buy more GPUs yet. However, a few weeks later guys, 
we did pick up three more and we have filled the entire rig. All right, boys, so today you guys can see we got brand new graphics cards in our little uh, shoe rack type storage thing. Basically guys, these ones previously, if I don't know if you guys seen it, if this is gonna be in the same video or not, basically guys, this uh, card right here, the 1650 is not powerful enough to run ETH hash. So uh, yeah, those are going back to Amazon. So we're getting our full refund on it. But guys, we got three brand new cards right here. You guys can see all part of the 6600 XT model and yes from amd now these are the gigabyte versions those ones are from msi so uh yeah let's actually go ahead and give this a shot shall we all right guys so at this point all we had to do is add in the next set of gpus so that is exactly what we did we unboxed the gpus placed them on the rig and then connected them up using the pcie cables and the risers now everything was going pretty smooth other than our cable management which looks like an absolute mess but you know what we're going to fix that up later so yeah guys i added one more gpu into the rig and it worked fine it was mining and then here comes the issues you see when we added the third gpu into the rig we booted it up and hive os would literally just shut down now if you guys don't already know hive os is the system that we're using to mine ethereum on so essentially we're just replacing windows with hive os Let's see what is actually happening. Is HiveOS being funky right now? Probably is, but great. This is just great, dude. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and troubleshoot this thing. Yeah, I knew this was not gonna be as simple a walk in the park. Okay, I'll see you guys in a bit. So guys, after testing one thing after another, I literally unplugged a few of the GPUs, replugged them in, swapped out the risers, and none of it would actually work. Now we basically figured out what the issue was guys. Now essentially the motherboard or the BIOS settings didn't have enough resources to actually run six GPUs all together and that's why it kept shutting the rig down automatically. So essentially guys all we had to do was update the BIOS and tweak up a few settings within the BIOS and off we went. Alright guys, so let's get into the costs for starting a GPU miner like this one right here. So when I first bought those parts, it costed me a total of $1,041.86 just for the mining rig, frame, and the actual motherboard, the RAM sticks, all the essentials, basically everything except the GPUs. Now the GPUs were the most expensive part of the entire rig. So for the first few GPUs that we got, the first three that is, we spent $1,890 on those three GPUs. We then picked up three more GPUs a few weeks later for a better price of around $600 each. Multiply that by three, we spent 1,800 exactly on the last three GPUs. So in total, we spent $3,690 on the GPUs itself. So that means guys, this entire rig right here costed a total of $4,731.86. Keep in mind these are Canadian dollars since I do live in Canada and everything was ordered from Canada. Also guys, if you want to order any of the parts shown in today's video, the link will be in the description for all the parts used to build this mining rig. Okay, so now I know you guys are looking forward to this section of the video. Let's go over some profits. So you guys can see these are the two transactions that showed up right here. We got 500 and $21 from mining as well as $535 also from mining. And yes, that's mining for two months. Now you guys are probably screaming, bro, you, you're not paying electricity, what is this? Guys, guys, don't worry, we're about to figure that out right now. So you guys can see, each day we make $11.96 roughly, it fluctuates depending on the price of Ethereum. And yes, that is in USD currently, so let's convert that to Canadian, which gives us $15.30. So now right here guys, on HiveOS it says we're using 295 watts. And as you guys can see here, at least in my city, we are being charged 0.0579 Canadian dollars for every kilowatt hour. Now to finish up our calculations, you guys can see right here we have 294 watts and we want to see how much it costs per day and that actually gives us 7.056 kilowatts per hour now we went over to our calculator and all we had to do is actually plug in the rate of electricity per kilowatt hour and multiply that by this number right here which gives us a grand total roughly 40.9 cents so that is our cost per day guys now if we multiply that out to a month you guys can see 
our average cost for this mining rig it could be more could be less I'm not too sure if it's that accurate guys but according to Hive OS it should be anywhere around $12.25 Canadian meaning if we took this number right here multiplied it by the two months that we have been mining this costed us roughly $25 we'll just say and if we subtract that from this amount right here which is roughly around a thousand and fifty six dollars roughly so a thousand fifty six dollars minus 25 roughly which is round guys we pretty much made a profit of $1,031 in Ethereum. As well guys, we still have 0.0278 ETH pending for a payout, meaning we actually have to mine 0.1 ETH for a payout. But guys, right here you guys can see, we have roughly around $117 in USD still unpaid and sitting in our Hive OS account. Convert that to Canadian dollars, we have an extra $150 from 41 cents. Now subtract the little bit of electricity costs for the last week or so, and we have roughly about 150. Let's just round and take $6 off, guys. And we are left with a total profit, guys, of 1,175 Canadian dollars. Now to finish up our calculations right here, guys, we took our earned amount and divided it by our invested amount. To basically figure out what percentage we actually paid off per month that way we can figure out our ROI so roughly in a span of two months and a half I guess we have pretty much paid off 25% guys of our initial investment so if we go ahead and divide that by 2.5 for 2.5 months you guys can see we get around a 10% ROI every single month so if we're aiming to pay this thing off which obviously we are it would take us roughly around 10 months. However, guys, that assumes the price of Ethereum actually stays the same, or if you actually sell it along the way, I'm not too sure how you guys do things. Personally, for me, I'm keeping all my coins. I don't believe this is the top for the cycle yet. So obviously I'm not selling until, well, we see a giant parabolic run. That is the plan, guys. I'm holding all the coins that I mine. So my hopes is that I can actually pay this entire rig off in around six to eight months, including the gains that we accumulate from the actual appreciation of the asset. So what are my final thoughts on Ethereum mining and crypto mining in general? Well, guys, I think it's pretty insane. Like, where can you guys get a 10 month return of investment? Like, if you guys are going for real estate, that takes years upon years, decades really. So is it worth getting into Ethereum or crypto mining in general? Well, in my opinion, guys, it's been pretty successful. Now keep in mind, this entire project here came with giant risk. Like, honestly, guys, if you're mining Ethereum and all of a sudden crypto drops like 50%, well, there goes your profit, guys. So yeah, guys, take this information, this entire video, with a grain of salt. This is really just a project that I always wanted to start, and I, I wanted to share it with you guys. So, so obviously, guys, play it smart. Don't invest more than what you're willing to lose, but sometimes you gotta. Not really. So is it too late to get into Ethereum mining? In my opinion, guys, it's really never too late. But the longer you guys wait, the more risk you guys actually take on. So... I'm not trying to say you should start now. I don't know when you guys are watching this video, but when I actually created my rig, which happens to be a few months ago, guys, because I released this video like two to three months after it was built. Now, at that time, it was more of a safer bet because two reasons. One is I believe this Ethereum price has still a long ways to go, guys, because we got a bull run to complete, finish up, whatever you want to say. And I believe that's going to run into next year. Well, at least until Q1 is over. And secondly, if you guys don't already know, Ethereum 2.0 is coming out and I'm not too sure exactly when, nobody really is, but they're estimating it for sometime next year. Now obviously guys, if you don't know what Ethereum 2.0 is, basically you guys can't mine Ethereum any longer simply by switching over I believe to uh, proof of stake. So what does that mean for all the miners currently mining Ethereum guys? Well. Essentially, we can't mine it anymore. But if you guys look over at HiveOS, there are a ton of coins that are going to be still mineable afterwards. And yes, you guys can select any of these and start mining, but it just simply won't be as profitable as Ethereum. And that's the other thing you guys have to take into account is all these Ethereum miners right here. Everybody that's mining Ethereum, which is majority of the miners, because it's the most profitable coin to mine right now. Well, you guys gotta think, where are these miners going to go? So they're either going to sell the GPU miner simply as PC parts, or they're going to switch over to these other coins. Meaning guys, all the saturation in Ethereum currently would literally go flooding into all these other coins. Obviously, I'm no expert guys, but I'm pretty sure that's going to drop profitability across all these other coins. 
So uh, yeah, that's going to be interesting to see guys. So to summarize, is it too late? Well, in my opinion, I'm personally not expanding any further rigs until, until Ethereum 2.0 actually drops and we see what the profitability looks like on other coins. But until then guys, I'm going to hold off and wait for a bear market, especially guys, I forgot to mention, if you guys are watching this video um, during release, well guys, uh, you probably know about the chip shortage where GPUs are jacked up crazy prices right now and low stock inventory everywhere. So yeah guys, it's not a great time to try to get an Ethereum miner, but obviously I can't stop you guys from doing that if you guys so choose then, you know, that's your own financial decision. Now let's not make it all doom and gloom, guys, because it's really not. We can always make more passive income elsewhere as well. So if you guys want to see how it is done using a different method other than mining, here is a video for you on the screen right now where you guys can see how we're making passive income using a bunch of phones. So I'll see you guys there. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Peace out for now.